last time on Fixing the Money Thing. Friend, you have to know what the Bible says. Today's lesson on the other side of faith, which is really a paradox, you can't have faith without the Word, but really what I'm saying is you have responsibility. You have responsibility. You must give the answer. What does the Bible say? And today on the other side of faith, when you lose a court case, you pay the court cost. Write that down somewhere. The devil wants to take you into a court case that you lose and you pay for it. Make him pay for it. It's amazing how many people don't know their legal rights. So the lesson of today is you have the legal, the responsibility, you have to know what the Bible says. Legally defend yourself on the other side of faith. Now on Fixing the Money Thing. So many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of Newton's Law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and the ship. You gotta be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. Do you understand when you know your legal rights, you might get a little feisty, right? You might get a little feisty. You want some of this? <laughs> you want, yeah, let me tell you about, let me tell you what's gonna happen. Let me tell you, let me tell you who's in charge here, dude. Let me tell you, you know. Most Christians don't understand 1 John 5, 14, this is our confidence. They have no clue what it means to be confident. They have no clue when they pray to know that they receive and expect it because legally they already have it. You know, don't let the devil take you on a trip that you don't want to go down and then bill you for it. <laughs> Fear is an expensive trip. You might remember the Tylenol story. It's a crazy story, isn't it? I thought I'd refresh your memory. I brought out a little Tylenol packet. Now, just in case you don't remember, this is back in the day when uh, we're pretty, you know, broke, busted, <laughs> and uh, not much happening, fighting anti, you know, fighting the spirit of fear, just kind of learning that that was even a demonic spirit at the time. I mean, isn't that crazy? I have an Old Testament degree, I've been in church all these years, baptized in the Holy Spirit, but didn't have any clue how to fight spiritual warfare. Crazy. Anyway, so I had a tooth abscess, and it hurt. <laughs> so they had, to, they had to take, you know, I had to, a root canal. Root canal is swollen, and so I was taking Tylenol every four hours. And for now two and a half days, I'm taking Tylenol. So the, the end of the third day, I'm reading a Tylenol box at 3 in the morning as I'm taking another dose of Tylenol. You know, I can't sleep. And this is, I'm reading it. This is what it says, Tylenol. This is what it said. It said, the maximum daily dose of this product is 10 capsules in a 24-hour period of time. So, no big deal. But my lightning brain began to think, wait a minute. Let's see. If I took it every four hours, how many capsules would that be in 24 hours? Come on, you mathematicians. 12, Right? So you can't take Tylenol every four hours. You may not have known that. <laughs> I didn't know that either. But here's the sentence that caught me. Right after it said, do not take more than 10, it says this. Severe liver damage may occur if you take more than the recommended dosage. What? They actually sell this stuff? I mean, Tylenol is like common as, you know, Really? I mean, now, when you are in, I'm in this, this zone of fear. I mean, I am not, like, devil-busting, you know, faith. I'm like, I mean, I'm on antidepressants. The devil's pulling my chain. I mean, financially, we're not doing well. And so, you know, I'm like, I better check this out. I'll call the Poison Control Center. Never called them before in my life, but that's why they're there, right? So I call them up. I say, hey, listen, I've been taking Tylenol every four hours. Two tablets every four hours. So I took 12 tablets in a 24-hour period of time now going on three days. 
her first sentence, her first sentence to me is, she asked my name, of course. Mr. Cassie, she said, we've never had someone live that's taken that dosage. <laughs> I am hoping to hear, like, someone say, oh, that, don't, that's, don't worry about that. I mean, if that was true, Mr. Cassie, half the population would be dead or something like that. You know, I mean, that's what I was expecting to hear, some kind of reassuring, like, go back to bed, Mr. Cassie, but no one's lived that's taken that dosage? <laughs> and you're battling the spirit of fear already? <laughs> oh, you didn't understand. I'm, I'm just taking two tablets every four hours. Yes, Mr. Cassie, I understand what you said. And we've never had someone live that's taken that dosage. Either you go to the hospital yourself or I'm sending an ambulance right now for you. Which would it be? What? My life? Like, really? Am I hearing this? I mean, really? I'm dying? Really? For taking Tylenol? I mean, come on. So I decide to drive to the hospital. I drive to the hospital, and there's two guys with white coats walking back and forth in front of the emergency room door. I pull in. They see me. They run over. Are you Mr. Cassie? Well, yeah, I am. Come on, follow us. Normally, if you go into the hospital, you have to sign papers. They ask you questions. You know, all that. You have insurance and all that kind of, none of that. Right in there. And I pass the big blackboard. My name is already on the blackboard. I'm not even there yet. It's someone already put it on there, Cassie Overdose. I've never even smoked a cigarette in my life, and now if you pull my medical file up, you're going to say, because he's a drug addict, he's overdosed. I mean, come on, right? So I'm in there, and the doctor, he pulls the blood, and he goes, he goes why are you here? Now, you got to remember, it's 3 o'clock in the morning now, it's like 5 in the morning, and it's been a rough three days, and I've been battling the spirit of fear, and my, everything's tanked out. And he goes, why are you here? You don't have enough tile on your bloodstream to heal a headache. And I said, I'm dying. They said I was dying. <laughs> he just started laughing. He goes, you got to be kidding me. Who told you that? Poison control? He said, you got to be kidding me. Well, I paid the $2,000 emergency bill. When you lose a court case, you pay the court cost. Write that down somewhere. The devil wants to take you into a court case that you lose and you pay for it. Make him pay for it. Amen. If you don't know your rights, you don't know what the Bible says, you'll lose the court case and you'll pay for it. Right? I'm telling you. James chapter 4, verse number 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, how do you resist the devil? I mean, this is life and death, so you got to know that one, right? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, you need to understand, it's kind of an interesting concept He's going to come at you, resist him because he's coming at you, but he's going to end up running from you. So why does he even bother coming at you to begin with? Because he doesn't know, he doesn't know if you know what he knows that you should know. <laughs> in other words, if you're in fear, you're not under heaven's jurisdiction. And he does not know if he has authority over you until he comes and tries to intimidate you, and he goes, oh, these guys are buying into this stuff. They're into my territory, and he can continue down that path. That's why the Bible says, so submit yourself to God first, then resist the devil. Right. Submit yourself to God. What does God say about this? What does the Bible say about this? Resist the devil. So how do you resist the devil? You know, a lot of Christians kind of do this. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You ever seen people do that? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You ever seen that say? Yeah, you got his attention. But when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he didn't go, it is written, it is written, it is written. He said, it is written, paragraph C, subsection E, sentence 5. It is, he put the, he, he quoted law. You follow me? In other words, you could say Jesus all day long, and there's power in that name, but the devil doesn't know if you know there's power in that name, and the power in that name is your citizenship in the kingdom of God, and do you know your rights? Now, you'll catch his attention. He'll back up and listen. He'll go, whoa, Jesus, okay. 
But if you can't defend yourself in court, he's going to go, they have no clue. Well, I'm a believer. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of believers that the devil takes for a ride. By the way, the term, someone says they're a believer. What are they believing? Oh, that's a big question. What are they believing? You know, it's interesting. You talk about the Bible to people and what the kingdom's like, and someone will say to me, well, you know, that's, my church doesn't believe that way. You ever heard people say that? Well, my church doesn't believe that way. I wasn't raised to believe that way. Anyone ever heard that before? There's a real easy way to fix that. Just take your Bible, hand it to them, and say, well, would you show me what you believe, and what will they do? Nothing. Because they don't have a clue what they believe. They just heard someone say something. They can't pull out the law and say, well, no, on chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, and this is my legal right. They don't know what the Bible says. And so it's amazing how many people don't know their legal rights. So the lesson of today is you have the legal the responsibility. You have to know what the Bible says. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.